And continuing, we start the 2023-10A Problem 6 set of five questions we'll do in a row for this rapid fire. An integer is assigned to each vertex of a cube. Let's draw a cube to get it started here. So you got a cube going like this. Yeah, kind of trying to draw it from the side so it's probably not fully accurate. I'm trying to block the camera lens. Um, okay, so there's your cube. Uh, the value of an edge is defined to be the sum of the values of the two vertices it touches. So maybe we could put like A, B, C, D here, and E, F, G, H. And we can say, okay, well, A plus D would be this edge, and A plus F would be this edge, and A plus B would be this edge. Okay, we have an idea of how it's working. Uh, and the value of a face is defined, defined to be the sum of the values of the four edges. So let's think about what's happening with that A. It's on this edge and this edge. So on this face, you're using the value of A twice. On this face, because AB is there and AD is there, you're using the value of A twice. And same on the back face as it would the left side face there. So uh, the sum of the values of the four edges surrounding it, the value of the cube, the whole thing, is defined as the sum of the values of its six faces. So essentially, A was used twice on this face, twice here, and twice here. How many times do we use every point then? Because A is not unique. The whole thing's symmetric. You're going to use A six times. So it's going to be six times A plus B plus all the way to H. Okay, suppose the sum of the integers is 21. That's the uh, each face of a cube. The sum of the integers is 21. So... If you think about it, then if that's what you have right here, right? So you're going to have 21 as all of your integers. I was thinking we have to find them and think about them, but we kind of don't, right? And so you kind of just need to know their sum. That's, that's what we've got. 6 times 21, 126. That'll be the answer. And let's get on to problem 7. And now for problem number 7 on the 2023-10A. It's also the last problem of the set of rapid fire for 12A, problem five. Janet rolls a six-sided die four times and keeps a running total of the numbers she rolls. So four times. What is the probability that at some point her running total will equal three? Well, if she rolls it four times, you're already gonna be over three, so we really don't care how many times she's gonna roll it. Maybe that's just their like extraneous information, so you stop to consider it, but there's really no need for it. Uh, we know that she has at least enough rolls to get to three. So we just kind of want to list out every possibility. Don't forget it's a running total. So since it's a running total, let's write them all out. She could get a one fun one. Those could be her rolls. That would add up to three. She could get a two followed by a one or a one followed by a two. And finally, she could get just a straight up three on the first roll. So the chance of getting one, one, one is one out of six times one out of six times one out of six. You're gonna get one out of 216. And the two is gonna be one sixth times the one sixth on the second roll is going to be a one in 36 chance, as will this also be one in 36, as will this also be one in six, not one in 36, there's only one roll here. So now we have to add all this up. So you're gonna have one out of 216 plus. You have two out of 36, but I'm just gonna multiply by six. I don't wanna reduce that. One over 18, that doesn't do us any good. So two out of 36 times six on the numerator and six on the denominator, because we know that six to the third is 216. You should have your perfect cubes memorized. That's 12 over 216. Finally, you're going to multiply this by 36 over 36 to again get 216. So you'll have 36 
over 216 there. 36 and 13 is 49 out of 216. There's no multiples of seven there, so we're done. And let's go ahead and move on to problem eight, and we'll be right back. And it's time for a Bredis scale, Barb the Baker, problem number eight of the 10A. Barb the Baker has developed a new temperature scale for her bakery called the Bredis scale, which is a linear function, linear function could be a clue, of the Fahrenheit scale. Bread rises at 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is zero degrees on the Bredis scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at it as zero, 0110, and this will be Bredis and Fahrenheit. Then what? Uh, bread is baked at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 100 degrees on the Bredis scale. And next up, it says that bread is done when its internal temperature is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. What is this in degrees on the Bredis scale? If you've taken my classes, you probably know I don't like to calculate things in normal ways. I like to find innovative, creative, quick processes. And so what I'm gonna notice is that from 110 to 200 is a distance of 90 degrees increase, whereas the increase here is 240 degrees. And I'm just gonna think, what are the implications of that? It's a linear process, rise over run, right? So if you're going up three groups of 30, because 30 is a common divisor of both of these. So if you're gonna go up three groups of 30 here, this is eight groups of 30. So if I went up eight groups of 30, then I went up eight groups of what to get here? It must be eight groups of 12.5. And since I only wanna go up three groups of 30, I only wanna go up three groups of 12.5, which is going to be 37.5. Let's go ahead and get to the next problem in this set of five. Okay, and so for the next problem on the 2023 10A, it's problem number nine. On the 12A, it's problem seven. A digital display shows the current date as an eight-digit integer consisting of a four-digit year followed by a two-digit month followed by a two-digit date within the month. For example, Arbor Day this year is displayed as, I mean, I'm sure we all knew what Arbor Day was. Of course we did, it's just like, you know, all the holidays that we know. So 2023, 0428. Okay, but now we know. Now we know when Arbor Day is, that's good, I suppose. So 2023, 0428, four being the month, 28 the date. For how many dates in 2023 does each digit appear an even number of times in the eight digit display for that date? Um, so we want 2023. So we know that we're starting 2023. I'm thinking I've got two twos right now and I could either have two or four twos. And I thought that was my casework in the beginning. So initially I would say case one, there is a two, digits of twos and case two, there is four twos. And I thought I would divide it like this. And so you start with that kind of thinking, at least for me. And then I think, okay, but what about the O3? There's only one of those. Why don't we focus on that? If I'm gonna, I have to have at least one more zero and one more three. Let's decide where they go. Well, the natural thing would be to make March go here, right? March and then I would need at that point, we've got an even number. All I need is the other two numbers to match. Uh, well, it can't be zero, zero, and it can't be 33. So we're gonna have to go with 11 and 22, and you get two cases in March. Now, let's try putting both of them on the end. So I could have 20, 23, and then end on the 30th. Okay, well, if I do that, I've got two threes, two zeros, two twos. I'm gonna need these two to be the same. Uh, I think the only one we got for that one is 11, right? We don't have any ones that can have a duplicate number in the month except for 11, 12 doesn't do it, 10 doesn't do it. 
So, uh, but that does make us think about 10. Maybe it's got a zero. Maybe we can do something with that for the next case. So one here. Then we'll have 20, 23. And we're gonna have to do something else with the three. What if, if, what if we could put it instead of 30 as 03? So if we put it as 03, again, keeping the three and zero together for now, trying to exhaust all possibilities, then you know you're gonna again have this happen for the 11th month. So you're gonna get another one there. Now we'll do 2023. And this time there's no more ways to put the O and the three together. So let's think about where the three could go. Um, I don't have a 13th month. Um, in the third month, they're already together. So I'm, I'm gonna have a three and my only options are 13 or 03, but we, don't, we can't even do 13. So we really just had it in the month. We cannot have the number three in the month now. So it's gonna have to go in the date. And if it's not gonna be 03, uh, maybe it could be 13. We also might have 31. We don't have 32. So let's go back and do 31 first. So if I do 31, I now have to have a one and a zero that would have to go here because we now have to duplicate the one and the zero has not been matched up yet. That's going to give us one case. So now we're going to go 2023 20, and you're going to say, well, are there all any more for 31? I don't see how I have to have a one. I have to, oh, I do. I could have a 10. And so there we go. That's going to have a two right there because you say, this is why you check those things with the exact way I just did. You say, it's go one. I can't, oh, I can reverse it. Yeah. 10 October. Does October have 31 days? Yes, it does. We just had Halloween. January has 31 days. Also ask those questions and confirm that they work. So now 2023, then we're going to say, if it's not 31 and it's not 30, we already did 30. I'm going to have to put the three in the ones place and I can't put O three. So I'm going to have to do one three. So if I do one three, I now have two threes. I need a one and a zero. And again, you're going to have O one and 10. So O one and 10 will both get that. That's going to give us two more ways. Okay. So now what if I do 2023 20, and you know, this is going together here, those go together there that goes with that. So now if I do 2023 20, and I put a 23 here, well, in that case, I have to have another two and I still have to get a zero. So there's only one that's going to have to be O2. Now, are there any other places to put the three? I've done 13, 23. Is there a 33? No, I've done O3, 20, 13, 23. Good. 30, 31. There's no 32. This has got to be it. We did put the three in here. There's no 30 that goes there. There's no other month that even has three satisfied. Two, four, six, three more, nine. Also, it was the last number on there. We are done. Let's get to the next problem. And the final problem of this rapid fire set, the 2023 AMC 10A problem 10, but it's also the 12A problem eight, not the last problem for that rapid fire. Maureen is keeping track of the mean or average of her quiz scores this semester. If Maureen scores an 11 on the next quiz, her mean will increase by one. I like to quantify what's happening as I'm going through it. It seems that we kind of need to know what her mean is currently or to, to kind of reason with this. So we're going to represent it the way I like to do average, which is the sum of n things divided by n, we don't know how many things, the n is a subscript, the result is the mean. And you can immediately cross multiply and you will know that the sum of n things is equal to the mean times the number of things. Now, if she scores an 11, that means her previous sum, sum subscript n plus 11, because all the previous quiz scores added up plus the new 11, but now you're gonna divide by n plus one, then, because uh, there's one new test, right? You had n things here, you added one thing, you now have n plus one things. So her mean will increase by one. This will become n plus one. Let's go ahead and move that over to get that the sum of n plus 11 will equal mn plus m. 
that is the m distributed and now the one will distribute plus n plus one okay next one up then we say if she scores an 11 on each of the next three quizzes let's put that one here sum of n there's three new quizzes so you're going to be dividing by n plus three and it doesn't say the next three quizzes after that one it says the next three quizzes because they haven't happened yet neither has this one okay so then it says uh, that you're going to add 33 because it's 11 times 3. Her mean, her average, will increase by 2. So that's going to be m plus 2. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. We're going to get the sum of n plus 33 and n plus 3m. And uh, 2n and then 6. 2 times n, 2 times 3 binomial distribution. Um, okay, so then, or multiplication, whatever you want to call it. So uh, now what? Let's take this one right here because I kind of want to line it up. The sum subscript n plus 11 equals mn plus m plus n plus 1. If I take this one and subtract this one, those are going to cancel. 33 minus 11 is 22. I will have 22 equals the mn's cancel. 3m minus m is 2m. 2n minus n is n. 6 minus 1 is 5. So I'll move the 5 over. We now know that 2m plus n is equal to 17. Further, we haven't done anything with this. It's kind of lingering in the back of your thoughts, or it should be. What could we do with that? Well, we might just look here even. You could, or maybe even over here, you could just take it and cancel it out this one and that one because they're the same thing so now we can say 6 off of 33 is 27 and you're going to have 27 equals 3m plus 2n moving this 6 to the 33 and keeping those two 3m plus 2n now we want to solve for what that's an m 3m plus 2n uh what is the mean of her quiz scores currently that's the M, right? So we kind of want to keep the M and get rid of the N. So in that case, let's go ahead and multiply the top one by negative 2. So I'm going to have negative 4M minus 2N equals negative 34. Add these two together. The N's go bye-bye. We get negative M equals negative 7, which means positive M is positive 7. And we're done with this problem, and we're getting to the next one.